everyone so today i am here to do oh, my favorite video of the year everyone's favorite video of the year which is my best books of 2018 so 2018 probably my best reading year of my entire life quantity wise as in i read the most books i've ever read in my life which was like 153 and the best books i've read in my life like the most best books but also some of the best books nothing top three souls sorry but a couple of these are really high up on my favorites list of all time so yeah today we have 15 best books of the year which is insane for me if you guys remember 2017 i struggled to scrape together seven best books so this year was a lot better <laughs> And then we have five honorable mentions. So uh, with the honorable mentions, they're going to be in no particular order, but then the actual favorite books are going to be counting down from 15 to 1. But let's start with the honorable mentions first. I guess I'll just do this in like order I read them. Yeah, let's just do it like that. So the first honorable mention is The Girl with the Pearl Earring by Tracy Chavalet. This is a book I read back in February and I loved it. This is just a very quiet, quaint little story about the girl who, like, was the model for this painting by, what's his name? Vermeer. And she basically just kind of recreates this story. She's like a little maid girl who works for Vermeer and his family. And it's a lot about the paintings and his wife and jealousy and this girl's story. And just kind of being in France in like, what, the 1800s, 1700s? I have no actual clue. It was just very quiet and like very like beautiful and I actually it is in no way similar but I got the same feeling from this book as I do from Three Souls which is why I think I loved it so much. The story wasn't as complex which is probably why it wasn't a favorite book of the year but it was the the feeling from this book was just so beautiful. If you like pretty writing or in very quiet, not very plot-driven books, like mostly character-driven books, I really, really highly recommend this one. The next honorable mention I have is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma, which is a Y-A-N-A -A romance novel, which is about forbidden love, which is why it's called Forbidden. Um, this book is about a brother and a sister who fall in love, which sounds gross and raunchy, and it was probably the reason why I was not picking this up for a very long time. But the biggest thing about this book was I am not a crier. I do not cry easily in general, let alone with books, like fictional stories and movies and TV shows and stuff. Just not my thing. I'm not a crier. But this book, I <laughs> was in tears, like almost in tears, and I had to give it some credit for that. I'm always very impressed when a book can make me that emotional and yeah, no, I almost cried. I think I like had tears in my eyes. They didn't necessarily fall, but I did have tears in my eyes and it's just like a weirdly beautiful story and it wasn't as like raunchy and gross as I thought it would be. <laughs> we got some Tay over here. I know you guys are all only here for my cats, not me, so... The next book on our honorable mentions is The White Book by Han Kang. Han Kang has written three of my favorite books, basically. I adore her writing. I adore her books in every way. Um, this was a... it's kind of a story told in all different types. Like, there's prose in here, there's poetry, there's lists and everything, and the story is basically completely told in white objects, which is why it's called Queen or The White Book. And I just thought this was incredibly unique and incredibly fascinating, and I really, really enjoyed it. This one is one that I feel like you can't talk that much about because, like, you just kind of have to experience it. So, very highly recommend that one. Especially because this is her book that I feel like I never have seen anyone talk about. Like, um, The Vegetarian and uh, Human Acts, I feel like I've definitely seen other people read, but this one I've never heard of anyone talk about, so look it up if you guys like The Vegetarian or Human Acts. So the next one is probably just like my most surprising book. Like this would be number one if this was most surprising books of the year. And that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a book that I shouldn't have liked. <laughs> this is a YA mystery book. I hate mystery. Like I hate mystery. I hate detective solving a case, mystery, clues up to a big 
reveal like I, that's just not a, that's just not what I'm about. I like thrillers. I like psychological thrillers and dark thrillers. Not a fan of mystery though. And it's YA, which I just do not read very much YA whatsoever. And I'm just really not a fan of it and it's tropes and stuff. But this book blew me away. I was so impressed with it. I read it in one day because I had to keep reading. I loved the characters. I loved the like relationship in this book, which I never like relationships in YA books. And I really like the mystery and I really, oh my God, the second book comes out really, really soon and I have it on hold at my library. And I'm so excited because this ends on a cliffhanger and I am just so excited. I also love the feeling of this book because it's set in Vermont and I live in Massachusetts, it, it, Massachusetts if you guys didn't know that, um, but I always go up to Vermont and stuff so it was just very like, it really took you to Vermont and really loved the atmosphere and the characters and everything about this book. And my last honorable mention is a very recent read, just December, and that is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I was very much debating whether or not to put this on this list just because I did read it so recently, so I'm kind of like, did I really like it that much or is it just I'm really hyped up on it because I just read it, which is why it's an honorable mention rather than a favorite book of the year. This book, I hear, I, like everyone knows what it's about, everyone's talking about it, it's, why, it's Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi story about a girl who wants to go to flight school but her father was a coward and all about flight school and aliens and all of that. Brandon Sanderson is incredible at storytelling. I was blown away. Like, I think I talked about this in my wrap-up, that I do not stay up late reading. I just don't like reading at nighttime. I never read at nighttime. But this book, I stayed up until like 11.30 at night reading it because I had to finish it. Like, I kind of had the goal to finish it um, because Cramathon started the next day, but I wanted to finish it after a little bit. And it was so good. The ending of this book is insane and I need the next book. ASAP. So I was blown away by this book and I loved it and I'm so happy I got one of the signed copies. So Okay, so now we are getting into the actual favorite books. I'm so sorry this video is going to be so damn long. It's already been filming for nine minutes. So we're just gonna go really quick, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about, number 15, 15, is my favorite manga series I read this year. So this, I'm gonna hold up the first volume, but it's the entire series. Um, and if you guys were here back in January, you guys would have heard me rave about this series. And that is Honey So Sweet by Amu Meguru. This is everything I could have wanted in a manga. Oh my god. I don't really like shoujo. If you guys can't tell, I read a lot of shonen. Like shoujo, I've read like Orange and like or in high school host club and those are really the only shoujo's I've liked before this one. This one took the cake. Like guys, I'm obsessed with Orin High School Host Club and this one beat it. This is my favorite shoujo of all time. I adore it. It is about a girl, a really cute, timid girl who falls in love with a delinquent, which sounds like My Little Monster, which I know a lot of people really like, but I'm just gonna throw it out there and say that this is better. I have read the first volume and a half or so of My Little Monster and I really didn't actually like it that much, I'm not gonna lie, and this was leagues better in my personal opinion. The art style is beautiful. I love it. It's super feminine and girly and bubbly and it is just so funny but also handles some really important topics like sex and like relationships and abusive relationships and it was just so wonderful and I do not see enough people reading this. I adore adore the two main characters, but I also love every single side character there is in this book. Like, I really need to reread these if I'm completely honest. I loved them so much. I, it's only eight volumes too. If you guys don't like long series, it is only eight volumes and just look at how cute it is and I just love it so much. Okay, so the next one is a book I read pretty early on in 2018, but I loved it so much and it warms my very soul to see I've seen like three of my close friends put this book on their favorites list of the year and it like actually like that is what keeps me as a booktuber and a book reviewer is seeing people take my recommendations and then love the books and I'm just so happy so many people read this because I feel like I've not seen anyone really talk about it on booktube and it is so freaking amazing and that is Vincent and Theo by Deborah Helligman. I love this book so much. So I saw the kind of indie film 
of Vincent Van Gogh. I can't remember what it's called. Loving Vincent. And I loved it. And I honestly, this is embarrassing. I did not know who Vincent Van Gogh really was. Like I knew his name. I could not tell you what he painted. He painted Starry Night, if anyone else is in the same boat as me. <laughs> I really didn't know anything about Vincent, but one of my friends was obsessed with him, which is why we went and saw Loving Vincent. And then I saw this at the library, and I picked it up and read like 30 pages and was like, no, I need my own copy. It's amazing. The writing in this book is so beautiful and so hard hitting. It's like ridiculous. I'm not really a big fan of nonfiction, but this book you don't feel like you're reading a nonfiction book. Like it is a novel but about a real person, you know what I mean? Like it is told so perfectly and so seamlessly and beautifully and she just did such a wonderful job capturing Vincent and Theo's relationship, like friendship and brotherhood and it's just, it's a very hard book to describe because it is about a real person. Because I, I want to be like, oh, the characters are great, but like they're real people. I think how she portrayed them was really, really great and really realistic and this was just such a like history lesson and like a very it gave me so much information and knowledge but also just a beautiful beautiful story okay so number 13 is actually a book i read for class which is crazy to me it's just every once in a while i'll read a book for class and absolutely freaking love it and this time it was a line made by walking by sarah Baum. i read this for my irish literature class with malcolm i always feel like i have to say malcolm because people know him and i oh my gosh just look at all of those sticky notes i loved this so much it is about on the surface it is about a young i think she's 25 or 26 year old woman who is struggling to find herself and she her grandma dies so she goes and lives in her old house but it's so much more than that it's also about her struggles with depression and possibly ocd it is never diagnosed ocd but she thinks she might have ocd which i related to so much you guys didn't know i have ocd and i related to her on such a deep personal level and it's about it's also so much about irish history like if you read this book you are getting like a flash history lesson about his the history of ireland and it's about finding yourself but also just like understanding your own history and your own culture it was it's such a hard book to explain but it is beautiful it is a beautiful beautiful book and i really loved it and i loved the discussions that we had about it and like the irish famine and all of that kind of stuff and i can't recommend this enough i would only say don't read it if you are triggered by discussions of depression and OCD and also dead animals because one of the parts of this is that she is a photographer and her project is taking pictures of dead animals. So if you don't like descriptions of dead animals, maybe stay away from this. But other than that, this was oh, it's just so beautiful. I feel like I'm never going to forget this story. Like this is a book that is going to stick with me forever and I hope other people read it. And feel the same way. Okay and number 12 is I Was Born for This by Alice Oseman. I adored this book. I read both Radio Silence and I Was Born for This this year and I was debating putting both on this list but I decided just to go for I Was Born for This. Basically I related to this book on a level I was not expecting to at all. I feel like that's a big thing with books that I become my favorites is I'm so able to relate to them and this book I feel like if you read this book, like if I was to hand this book over to someone and told them to read it, like I would be giving them like a screenshot of like a very important part of my life. Because if you guys don't know, I am huge into K-pop. I have always really liked boy bands, I'm not gonna lie. I was a Backstreet Boys girl back when I was like a child and I loved One Direction and right now I'm really big into K-pop. And I feel like it might sound really silly to other people to like say that that's such a big part of your identity, but it really is. Like being in a fandom can be so important to who you are as a human being. And this book really captured that. It was just like, it's about a girl named Angel who's, I think she's in high school, maybe early college. And she's obsessed with this boy band called The Ark. And it's about her, you know, meeting her online friend who, like, I 
I think I would cry if I met a couple of my online friends. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so excited. If Astro come and tour, I might actually meet my best friend online. Like, it's about her meeting her best friend. It's about, like, their relationship and friendship. It's also about her relationship and friendship with the fandom and with the boys of the band. And it's just, like, so amazing. It's also told from a boy from the band's point of view. And I just feel like if you are a part of a fandom, you need to read this. Even if it's not a boy band fandom, boy band fandom probably helps a little bit. But if you're just a part of any fandom, you need to read this. Also, if you're trying to understand someone's obsession with a boy band, you need to read this. Oh my god, we're only on number 11. Kate, please speed up. Okay. Um, number 11 is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, another Brandon Sanderson novel. I read this as a buddy read with Haley in the summertime, and we absolutely loved it. This book is really hard to explain. I really don't want to go into a synopsis of it. It's a high fantasy novel, multiple point of views, and I am so excited to read the next couple of books. I'm trying to save them for when I can actually fully be immersed in them and really, really, like, love them, but that's the only reason we haven't continued but this was just an adventure <laughs> brandon sanderson remains one of my favorite like authors of all time and i don't think that's going to change anytime soon also i just find his books really accessible i think that was the biggest surprise about this book was how accessible it is it's huge it's over a thousand pages but i didn't necessarily feel that scared after i was into it and i loved so many characters in this and the ending was insane absolutely insane and it i hear that it just gets better from here so there you go number 10 i feel like might be a surprise only because i feel like i didn't talk like i don't talk about this book that much like i don't get that many opportunities to talk about this book but i also don't do like tags or anything like that so i don't know why i would talk about many of these books at all but number 10 is the oracle year by charles soul this book I loved it. I got it from the library originally and then got myself my own copy because I loved it so dang much. This book feels like you are reading a comic book, but it's a novel. It is about a boy who, or man really, it's an adult novel. Um, a man who he suddenly has this dream and he gets like over a hundred different, 108 predictions about the future, just like ingrained in his head. And they're so random. They're everything from like, this person is going to get cancer to oranges in Florida are gonna like not do well this year. Or like, this man is going to catch a fish on this day. You know what I mean? Like they are everything from really, really important to very, very trivial, but it, they are ingrained in his brain, even though it was a dream. He can remember every single one perfectly. And it is about kind of him becoming this character to the world, like this secret character that he made a website to post all of these predictions. And at first it's like, you know, he's selling the predictions to people and stuff like that. But it becomes so much more and like it becomes like just this crazy crazy story i would say if you like comic books you need this book this felt like i was reading a comic book i said it so many times while i was reading it and people told me charles soul is actually i think a marvel writer or dc one of the big right like superhero book writers and he translated it so perfectly into a novel. I freaking loved this book. This was just so dang good and I have seen no one talking about it. I just, I loved it. And the ending was insane because just like some like very trivial little things that you talk about at the beginning of the book suddenly became the ending. It was, oh, it was so good. He was just so good at layering this story together and just, oh. more people need to read this book. It was so great. My number nine is a book that I feel like has been on quite a few favorite books of the year lists because everyone read it this year and loved it and for good reason and that is Astonishing Color of After by Emily Arx R. Pan. This book is a YA magical realism kind of story about a girl whose mother commits suicide and she believes has turned into a bird and it is about her kind of discovering her culture because she has to go to Taiwan to kind of learn more about her mother's spirit turning into a bird and kind of about all of that stuff. This book was so beautifully told, so beautiful. Her writing is gorgeous. And I don't like flowery writing. I don't know if I've said that before. I do not like flowery writing and this was gorgeous. And I loved the main character and just like her dealing with grief was just very very realistic like this could have been a true story like i'm actually currently in a 
class about death and dying and I feel like most of those stories are true stories that I'm currently reading but this could have been read as like a true story just about dealing with grief because basically when her mom was committing suicide she was having her first kiss with a boy that she has a crush on and she has a lot of guilt from that and just trying to deal with that kind of fact and also just dealing with the fact that her mom committed suicide and left her and her father and it was it's a beautiful beautiful story about grief about a mother and a daughter's relationship and a, and a daughter and a father's relationship and also discovering your culture and I love this book so freaking much. Number eight is a series, another series that I buddy read with my friend Haley and we adored these books and that is The Themis Files by Sylvan Neuville. I just have the first book here. I actually only just very recently bought the first book because it came on sale and I wanted it um, but I'm talking about all three books. I love these books so dang much. Actually my favorite in the series is number two but all of the books together are just great. I'm sure everyone has heard about these books a hundred times. The third book came out this year and everyone's been talking about these books for years. I thought they were really overhyped, that they weren't going to be that great, and then I got into them and I loved them. It's a book completely told in interviews and like phone calls and like diary logs and stuff like that about these people during a time that giant robots are discovered on earth. Basically this woman falls into a hole when she's a child and she lands on the hand of a giant robot and kind of her wanting to reassemble this robot as she becomes an adult and we also just have this character who's just the agent and I loved him so much and oh my gosh and Jen I know a lot of people were disappointed in the ending I like didn't love it but I definitely thought it was good um and I just the second book oh, was so great and we just get like relationships and characters and I was like weirdly really attached to every single character and everything that was happening even though it was told in interviews I just, I loved it. I loved it. The format is not going to be for everyone, but if you do enjoy different formats, like if you like the Illuminae, you're going to like this. I didn't like Illuminae, but you would like this, you know what I mean? And it was a beautiful story. Not beautiful, but there's lots of action in the second book. There's lots of like figuring out what's happening in the first book, lots of action in the second book, and then a great finale conclusion of the third book and looking at humanity and humans. And it's great. And number seven, the, here you go guys, if anyone was wondering where Killing Commandadora is, it's number seven. I'm sure actually some people are probably shocked that it is this low on the list because it's Haruki Murakami, my brand, my favorite author, my dad. Um, Haruki Murakami is my favorite author of all time. He wrote one of my favorite books of all time, actually several of my favorite books of all time, but this was his newest release um, that I read this year, obviously, right when it came out. I loved it, if you guys wanted to see on my tabs. This book is great. I loved it so much, but it wasn't like the perfect story to me. I found that the only thing I didn't like about this book was that it wrapped up nicely, which most books you want to wrap up nicely, but Haruki Murakami, I just really enjoy his like, how do I say it? Like keeping you in a dream, like not everything really makes sense, but this book almost made sense, which I weirdly didn't like, but other than that, this was great. It has all of Murakami's quirkiness and weirdness and beautiful writing. I really, really enjoyed this book, but it wasn't perfect to me, which is the only reason it is this far down on the list. Really, really enjoyed it, but I do have a full review that you guys can check out about this book. Number six, we're finally getting into the, the big ones. <laughs> Number six was a book that I read earlier this year and I loved it so dang much. Of course, it's number six on this list and that is Rainbirds by Clarissa Gowenawan. This is another one I am so excited every single time I see someone read this and say it was because of me, which I've seen a couple people do and it makes me so emotional. <laughs> I love this book so much. This book I always describe as a perfect combination of Haruki Murakami and Jenny Chang. Jenny Chang wrote my favorite book of all time, Three Souls, as well as a book that I really, really enjoyed, Dragon Springs Road, and Haruki Murakami is my favorite author of all time. So this book just like took those two authors and just smushed them together. Like this felt just so Murakami, it was ridiculous, but also the writing and just like punch in the face kind of emotional impact that Jan Chang's writing has. This book follows a man who his sister dies and he like goes to Japan where she lives in Japan, uh, Akakawa. 
and he's there to like conclude her like affairs because she died obviously she was stabbed to death but he like weirdly starts taking over her life and starts living her life like she he gets her old job and lives in her old apartment and like all of this they you have a weird female teenage character just like may and all the other herky Murakami characters and just like it was so weird and unsettling but beautiful and i really really enjoyed it i don't know how to explain it more than that though um it's definitely a book that you just kind of have to experience kind of like a jenny chang or haruka murakami book but trust me comparing it to those two authors very high praise like this book was wonderful i loved it so much i actually really want to reread it because i feel like i like flew through the second half of this book and i didn't get to annotate it which I want to, so I might reread this very soon. <laughs> oh my god, we're into number five. Number five. Number five on my list of favorite books of the year was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Yes, actually, if you guys didn't know, 2018 was the first time I read this book. I read it twice in 2018. I read it at the very, very beginning in January, and then I reread it in September before Muse of Nightmare came out. I really wished I could have put this whole series as a favorite, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, Muse of Nightmare wasn't my favorite book. It was like a four star, and while this is like a five star praise the lord kind of book. I love this one so freaking much. I have two copies, which I don't buy cop multiple copies of my books. I actually have two copies of another book in this. What? Who am I? Okay. Um, but yes, I love this book so much. I, d I feel like everyone knows what this is about by now. This is a high fantasy novel about a man named Lazlo Strange who works as a librarian in this place. And then he, like, he researches this lost city of Weep where he knows that something happened to this city because he can just kind of feel it. He, like, felt the magic leave and, like, he felt himself lose the name of this city because it's not actually called Weep, it's called something else, but, like, it was destroyed from everyone's memories and it is about him and then, like, he gets to go to this city of Weep and they have to get rid of a problem that this city has. It's also about God spawn. And I love the romance in this, which I don't like romances, like I mentioned, in YA or just, like, in general. I'm not usually a big fan of the romances, but this one was so amazing. I know a lot of people say it's insta-love, and I just do not feel that at all. Lazlo and Sarai are just so beautiful together, and I love it so much. Um, I do say, I know that a lot of people say that this is quite slow, but for me, who doesn't really like war and politics in fantasy novels and likes my character driven fantasy novels this was perfect i did not find it slow at all and i just loved every single character so freaking much there were just so many wonderful things in this book i'm not gonna lie sometimes i just forget muse of nightmare happened because one of the things i love so much about this book was how many questions and theories i had about it and i love this so much okay number four wow we're getting into top four let's go number four it might also come as a surprise just because i feel like i haven't really gotten a chance to talk about this book again that's the problem with me never doing like tags or like anything more than just like discussions and wrap-ups and stuff because i'll love a book and then never talk about it again <laughs> but number four of my favorite books of the year is never world wake by marisha pestle Wow. Just like looking at this book makes me happy. So this was another book that similar to Skyward, I stayed up past when I normally stay up to read. This was a book that I read in one day on accident. Like it was just so fast paced and gripping. And I just needed to know what happened next that I kept like putting my bookmark in it to like be like, I'm gonna stop here for the night, I'm gonna stop here. And I just kept taking it out and taking it out and trying it again and trying again, and trying to find a place to stop and I couldn't. Like you get into this book and you can't put it down. It is about a group of kids who they, we're all friends in high school, I think, and then they go off to college and then they come back and they're not really friends anymore, especially our main character isn't really friends with them anymore, but she gets invited to go and stay at their lake house for a night and reconnect with all of them. And while they are there, they get into an accident and die. And they are caught in a thing called a Neverworld Wake, which is basically them reliving the same, like, 11 hours, I think it is, over and over and over and over and over until they pick one person to survive and all of the rest die. I love, I love 
the living over and over and over and over a certain day or time or something. It is like such an amazing trope and I love it and Marcia Pestle did it so well, so freaking well. I loved it so much. I loved all of the characters. I love this story so much. The ending got me so much. What's her name? Martha? I think her name is Martha, the character that I loved so much in this. Like, and then the ending is just so amazing and I love this book so much. I found it so unique. The writing is so fast paced and so interesting. And again, it just keeps you gripped and just flipping the pages. And I don't know, I, it's hard to explain certain books because I feel like I'm going to give something away. But just know, I freaking love this. It is so good. This is like four and up are books are on my favorite books of all time and like weirdly high up on my favorite books of all time. So loved it, obviously. Number three. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Number one, two, and three have changed so many times throughout the year <laughs> because I read all of these in this first half of the year so like summer and before and just ever since like as I was making this list they just kept changing so I feel like they're kind of interchangeable but right now this is the order that they're in number three is Born by Jeff Vandermeer <sighs> I know. This was number one for a little while, it was number two for a long time, it was three and then it was one again and the, oh, it was just changing so much because I love this book so dang much. I feel like this is the book I hype up the most probably. No, actually no. All three of these books I hype up a lot. I'm sure they're not going to be that big of a surprise. Born is a sci-fi novel about a woman named Rachel who lives with her like friend, boyfriend kind of wick, and they live in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi-y kind of world where they have to scavenge to survive, Rachel has to go and scavenge to survive, and wick like makes things and like bioengineers things with what she brings back, and they are in a world where their god and ruler is a flying bear called Mord. I love this so much. <laughs> and one day while she is out scavenging, Rachel finds a little plant that is conscious <laughs> and she names him Born and he slowly grows as a creature, character, living thing and he, she kind of has to like teach him how to like be a person but he's not a person and it's it's a lot about like what does it mean to be a person and what does it mean to be a like conscious thing and then oh my god the ending of this book I still think about it. Like, this thing that we find out about Wick, I I still think about it, like, very, very often. And just this entire book was just so wonderful. I think I read this as a buddy read with Graham, and he also loved it, and we just really- I just- I loved the world, I loved the characters, it was the weirdest thing I read in a very long time. Like I love my weird shit, but it had been a while since I read it, kind of since I went on my Murakami binge of reading just every single one of Murakami's books. I hadn't read a book that made me feel like this did. This didn't- this isn't like Murakami, but it is in the sense of like, it's just so weird and wacky and unique, and that is what I love in books, is weird, wacky, and unique. Those are my key words when I want to describe a book that is this in a nutshell. Like, Born is the weirdest and the wackiest book I've read, probably, honestly, maybe more than Murakami books. I love this so much. Okay, number two. Number two. These two books definitely go back and forth with number one and what, number two, but number two, we're gonna say The Book of M by Sh Peng Shepard. Yes, I do have two copies because I love this book so much and I have a pretty UK copy and I have like a crappy just like little US paperback one that I'm going to annotate because I don't want to ruin this one, but I'm gonna hold up this one. The Book of M by Peng Shepard. Oh my gosh. First off, this cover and everything about it is beautiful. This book, I loved it so much. I, Haley recommended it to me because she finished it and immediately was like, oh my god, this book is absolutely amazing. It's about a post-apocalyptic world where, kind of post-apocalyptic, where basically on this one day, and I've been told that is real, in India there is a time of day during the year that the sun is so perfectly overhead that everyone's shadows disappear. And on this day, 
a man's shadow just never returns and it's gone and he's seen as like this crazy like you know gift from god and all of this stuff but then over time they realize that this man is losing his memories and slowly but surely other people are losing their shadows and with it their memories so this isn't just memories of like oh you know like remembering who people are like who your family is or something this is also just like remembering how to eat and how to drink and how to like survive as a human and also these people obviously are losing their memories and everything and how to survive so some of them become violent kind of like zombie-ish and other people are like very very slowly losing their memories so they don't really realize that what like what they're losing and we follow a man ori and his wife max who max has lost her shadow and ori is trying to just keep them alive and also kind of figure out how to get it back and to keep her memory alive this book had one of the best endings of a book i have ever read in my life it made me so like physically angry i like can't even like think about it without like physically being like like <laughs> like but it's weird because you'd probably be like oh like angry isn't good but like any book that can pull that kind of emotion out of me is a good book i was so angry because i love these characters so much but the ending made me so physically angry but it was also one of the most unique endings i have ever read in a book in my life again keyword unique this book took the post-apocalyptic train thing and just ran with it and did it so much better than any I've ever read in my life. It is so amazing. And again, I did pick up another copy specifically to reread and annotate. So Haley, we're doing a reread of this soon. Okay, okay. So yes, that was number two. So I'm assuming you all know what number one is. If you don't, you're new here or you don't listen to me. <laughs> Number one, my favorite book of 2018, one of my favorite books of all time, Battle Royale by Kushin Takami. Oh, TBT, TBT, if you're an OG person who was around when I almost unhauled this book, oh, oh, I look back at past Kate and get so angry. <laughs> this book is, oh my god, I love it so much. Oh my god. This is another one I need to reread and annotate because I actually listened to the audiobook of this, which I do really suggest. I love the audiobook. This book. Okay, so this is kind of what The Hunger Games ripped off. This book is about a Japan, I kind of guess it's a little bit futuristic e post-apocalyptic e, but not really. Basically a Japan where they feel the need to kind of tamp down on kids because kids were being very rebellious and like against the country and so basically every year an eighth grade class is chosen to go into a battle royale which basically they're taken against their will to a place to fight to the death and only one person can win and all of that kind of stuff and then the child who wins is supposed to just go back right to their normal life and just continue and just you know be put into another class because their entire class is dead so in this book we follow shuya and noriko and shoujo shogo <laughs> i still don't know how to pronounce it and he's my favorite character like almost one of my favorite characters of all time he is a favorite character of all time i don't know if he's number one but anyways shogo noriko and shuya who are people obviously who got chosen to be in the battle of royale and it's just I feel like one of the criticisms I always see about this book is that you don't really get to know the characters that well, you don't really get a very good background of many characters, and you don't really get to stay with characters long enough to care about them because they're dying. And I just feel like you need to know Japanese literature to understand this. Japan I wouldn't call this horror, but Japanese literature is just very quiet and quaint and very, like, I don't know how to describe it other than quiet. Like, if you read Japanese horror, it's very quiet and it doesn't make a big deal about the horror. And this book kind of did this. It kind of just told you the story rather than really showing a big emotional impact of what was happening. I also feel like this book kind of purposely didn't really show you that much of the characters because you're kind of supposed to be able to put yourself into the book and think about it in terms of yourself and your own friends and your own like class that you grew up with and I think 
that was genius. <laughs> I also just am a huge fan of Japanese literature and the way Japanese literature is written usually, which is how this was written. And I just love, I love the writing so much. I, I personally really did connect to a couple of the characters. Like Shogo is, I love him so much. And then obviously the ending is great. And just, I think about this book so often. I think that's the thing that put it at number one, like right now. I just think about this book so often and it's just such a wonderful story and has such a commentary about humanity and humans and society and just it's wonderful i don't know how to talk about it any more than that it is just a wonderful wonderful story about children killing each other <laughs> that is the story that i like <laughs> wow these stacks are really big so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hold them up i'm probably not going to <laughs> But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed my 2018 best books of 2018 wrap up kind of thing. And I'm sorry that it is so dang long. <laughs> but anyways, again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely tell me if you have read any of these books or if I have convinced you to put them on your TBR. It always makes me feel so good knowing that some people pick up books because of me. Again, like I mentioned earlier, it is kind of the reason that I still do this because hearing that someone picked up and loved the book because of me it just really makes my heart flutter. <laughs> but anyways, again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and tell me down below in the comments those things. And I love you all and I will see y'all soon. Bye!